How's it going, gents? Here we are today in my garage talking about the Simpson Desert. So as you know, I have a bit of a love affair with the old Simpson Desert. Uh, I've tried to cross it back in 2015 on my KTM 690. I was with Nurb, uh, Mark, Osmotica, and we attempted to try and cross it. Two 690s, I was on my KTM 690, Nurb was on his 1190, and Mark was on his Tiger 800. That obviously failed miserably. The two bigger bikes were struggling. Uh, the two KTM 690s were doing a ride through it, but when we got back, we realized that they needed full engine rebuilds. So the Simpson was a bit much for the KTM 690s. Uh, then back in 2016, uh, we tried to hit the Simpson Desert again after we did Cape York, but I'd blown the engine on my 690 again and I needed a helicopter and uh, then I had to buy a ute and drive from Northern Territory back to Melbourne with my KTM 690 in the back. You can see all of that in the Cape York videos that I posted. And the next year after that, 2017, me and my wife took our Jeep Wrangler, put the Jeep, we did the Simpson Desert in the Jeep, we did it successfully, uh, quite easy for the Jeep, Jeep's very capable, so uh, it was no problem, it was good to see to see it done, see the whole thing. Now I know what I need to do. And uh, even in the Jeep, it was it was a long, a long slog. Three days of, of driving through sand dunes without, you know, not seeing a town or there's no fuel, water, or anything along the way. Um, that's the the challenge of the Simpson Desert. Which make what makes it exciting is um, is the challenge of trying to cross over 500 kilometers of sand dunes, the softest sand you've ever ridden in with no support, no water, no food, no fuel available on the way, you have to take everything. So this year I'm on the WR250R, gonna do the Simpson Desert on this. See, 2017 uh, I did a, the Simpson Desert in the Jeep and then last year, 2018, I did Goog's track, which is kind of a similar track, just not as long on the WR250R. It was spectacular, no dramas whatsoever. Um, but this year we're going to take on the Simpson Desert and it's going to be me, Nurb, uh, Brendan and Nick on their WR250Rs, Nurb more than likely on his 1190 Adventure, maybe KDM 790 Adventure, we'll have to see. Um, but we'll be all on WRs. There might be a few others coming, I don't really know yet. Um, but we're definitely going to be there on our WR250Rs and Nurb's going to be there on a KTM of some sort. So this year I've uh, decided to change it up a little bit. Um, on how I'm carrying fuel. I The last Googs track trip and almost every trip we've had fuel bladders leak. Fuel bladders are great because when you're not using them you can fold them up and chuck them in your panniers and they don't have to, they're not big and bulky. But they almost always leak and they're almost, they're so difficult to attach to the bike. When you're trying to ride over sand dunes and you've got 10 litres strapped awkwardly on a fuel bladder, it almost always falls off. So I'm done with fuel bladders, now what I'm going with is I've taken off the tail bag of the WR250R and I've put a Rotopax, uh, this is like a four liter Rotopax, um, which is actually, I've got a mount for the, the rack, so that's uh, very solidly on there. And then what that gives me is a nice little platform to strap on a bigger jerry can. So jerry cans, they never leak. Uh, they're much easier to strap onto a bike. Um, also a lot cheaper than fuel lighters. You do have the added bulk when you're riding up there and not really using them, it's kind of annoying. Um, but you just can't beat jerry cans for their durability and not leaking. Um, so this will be, this is 10 liters, this is four liters, so that's 14 liters. And then the tank is 14 liters, so that's 28 liters. Now I know a lot of people say that you need 35 or a bit more, 35 to 40 liters to cross the Simpson on a WR250R. But I did Goog's track, which is very similar to the Simpson. Uh, I did 535 kilometers of sand on only the 14 liter tank and one eight liter fuel bladder because my other eight liter fuel bladder fell off and went into the chain. And my first fuel bladder was also leaking. So I don't even know if I got full eight liters. So it was 14 plus eight, which is 24 liters to do 535 kilometers of sand. So the Simpson Desert is 500 kilometers of sand. Now Gook's track wasn't all sand dunes, there was some road, that's why it's a bit easier. Um, but the WR is very fuel economical. I think I'll be fine on 28 liters. We'll see how she goes there. Since the Gook's track, I've also gotten full Technic suspension. 
uh, so it's riding a ton better. Um, on the Googs track, I smashed the headlight, so it's just got a just a little LED in there. Other than that, new chain and sprockets, um, and I'll also get new tires before I go. But that's going to be about it for the WR50R. She is ready to go like that, and uh, we are going to take on the Simpson. My wife 636 doing good. My other bikes are in the other garage, along with my Jeep. Uh, the WR450F. Love this bike. Lives on the trailer because it's not road registered. It's only rec regged, so I have to trailer it out to places to ride it. But man, I love the 450F. Uh, wheelie machine, fifth gear wheelies. Uh, a lot of people ask about my e-bike. Still got my e-bike. Um, I just spent a year uh, commuting with my wife on the MT10 to work, but uh, I don't have to take her to work anymore. I'm back on the e-bike, riding the e-bike to work every day. It's really cheap, electric, fast, because it's de-restricted, does 50. 50 plus k's an hour uh, with pedal assist and uh, she's great. But yeah, that's the plan this year. So mid-year, uh, June, July, August is when you do the Simpson Desert because it's so hot and a desert. Uh, I think it's actually illegal to go in there uh, in summer. So we go in winter. So we're gonna do another sand shakedown in Little Desert in a month or so, fully fueled up with all the bags. Now, because I've removed the tail bag, uh, I do need some more room to put stuff and also I'm going to be taking more water into the Simpson Desert this year. Last time I went in the Simpson Desert on a bike I took four liters and that's just crazy because you're in there for, you've got to account for really three days in the Simpson and you're a desert doing incredibly physical activity riding a dirt bike through sand so you are drinking water like crazy plus you need water to cook and to clean stuff and so four liters was, was pretty crazy this year i'm probably going to take closer to eight to maybe ten i don't drink a lot of water like i'm not like a hardcore like you know i need to gargle a liter of water every time i stop but still uh when i went to the simpson last time and i realized i only had four liters and how hot when we were running up the sand dunes with that tiger trying to pull it up the sand dunes i realized crap i needed more water so uh, this year I'll be taking more water, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Wolfman tank bags. Uh, they just sit kind of here. That's kind of the only really unused space. Um, they're kind of little side bags here, so I'll have one which will have everything that was used to be in my tail bag. And then the other one will just be water. I'll balance out the weight and stuff, but um, yeah, that's the only other addition I need to get. Set of Wolfman tank panniers, um, and she's going to be loaded up, ready to go. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan this year. Tackle the Simpson Desert and also the sand test that we're doing in a month. I'll get the Wolfman panniers on there, fuel up everything, get it to the right weight and see if... That's the one thing that we didn't do really with the, the first time we went to the Simpson was really fuel up the bikes to the Simpson level and see if you can ride them. Because when I first fueled up and put everything on my KDM 690, I couldn't believe how heavy it was. When you're doing these trips unsupported, three days, 500 Ks of riding, completely unsupported with all your camping gear, all your water, all your fuel, everything, man, it's like a it's like a pack mule trying to ride the thing. So um, the WR is a bit better. It's got steel subframe and it's just literally better for carrying stuff than the 690, more places to attach stuff. The 690 was kind of bad for attaching things on. So I reckon the WR is gonna be great, but that's what we're doing. Simpson Desert, I will freaking beat you one day. WR250R, we're gonna do it. My bike died. I don't know if it's head gasket. I don't know if it's in the intake. I mean, we've been going, we've been traveling down a river. Whoa, the adventure gets freaking, the plot thickens on this one. So it's gone from, it's gone from getting to the Simpson Desert to then riding through the Simpson Desert and getting home. Do how will Tom get his broken bike home from the middle of freaking nowhere? And will Tom ever get out of this freaking road?